Welcome back to another episode of Rock Boys Football, taking a look at the Week 5 slate. And one of the most exciting games that you'll see as the Florida Gators head on the road to play the Kentucky Wildcats, two teams that I think are criminally underrated across the country. Yeah, Florida's in the top 25 now. That being said, I don't think many people can get that Florida performance against Utah out of their head. I'd remind people, Utah, that defense looks to be one of the best units in the country. That was a young Florida team heading on the road into an extremely hostile environment, and they played one really bad quarter of football, couldn't really dig themselves out. This Florida team, very, very good. And then you look at the Kentucky Wildcats, 4-0, 1-0 in the conference play. This is a team that you look at some of the stats, especially on the defensive side of the ball, extremely quality team, 3.9 yards per play. That's number two in the country for opposing offenses. They're only allowing 15 points per game. That's 17th in the country. This Kentucky team, although not commanding a ton of national media attention, a very quality ball club. I think both these teams can win a lot of games in the SEC. Excited to get into this one a little bit now. Before we do, just want to say thank you to you guys. The support you guys have shown for all these game breakdowns truly has been phenomenal. Over 9,000 subscribers that the support i can't thank you guys enough like it means so much to me i love doing this love hearing from you guys in the comment section so if you do enjoy the content you want to support the fellas consider subscribing to the channel but again more importantly the best part about doing this hearing from you guys talking ball so let me know your pick in the comment section and without further ado let's get into this one and i want to start with this florida offense Going against the Kentucky defense that I think is really, really good. You look at this front seven, guys like Octavius Oxidine playing extremely good ball. Dion Walker, Trevin Wallace, one of the better linebackers in the country. And then Death Taxes and Mark Stoops getting a really good secondary in the back end. Again, this Kentucky team only allowing 3.9 yards per play to opposing offenses. That is number two in the country. Only 15 points per game, number 17 in the country. I get it. They haven't necessarily played an elite schedule up to this point. Vanderbilt's their SEC opponent. That being said, from what you've seen, you really have to like what you've seen out of this Kentucky defense. Then you look at the Florida offense, and this Florida offense from week one to what you'll see in week five, a dramatically different team. Right, Going back to that, that Utah defense is absolutely elite. It was on the road with a transfer quarterback with some young guys kind of banged up on the offensive line. And it was a it was a sloppy performance out of Florida. That's that's for sure. They still, like on paper, played a lot better than people give them credit for. That being said, this Florida offense heading into Kentucky, I think, is a more confident group. It's a healthier group, and I think it has a little bit more identity. And I want to start with Graham Mertz. At Graham Mertz, what you brought Graham Mertz in to be was not a Heisman Trophy caliber quarterback. You knew you weren't getting Anthony Richardson with the highest of high upsides. You brought in Graham Mertz to kind of steady out this offense, be that game manager, that distributor, and that's exactly what he's done. I mean, he's completing 78% of his balls, four touchdowns to one interception, that one interception coming on the road against Utah. Since that game at Utah, Graham Mertz has looked excellent. And you see a lot of the Florida Gator fans upset about that performance against Charlotte. And I get there was some stuff that you need to get cleaned up, especially in the red zone, but they only punted twice. They averaged 6.7 yards per play. Like that offense was moving the football with relative ease. And then they got inside the red zone and they couldn't finish drives. They were one and nine on third down, but I I wouldn't let the scoreboard, if you're a box score watcher, like make you feel like this Florida offense played bad against Charlotte. They moved the football. I think Graham Mertz looked really good. Ricky Pearsall really emerging as that dude. That catch was absolutely phenomenal. The run game's getting going. I would like to see a little bit more of Trevor Etienne and Montrell Johnson. My big question mark for this game is, can Kentucky, who's forcing two turnovers per game, only allowing 2.3 yards per rush, which is top 10 in the country, can they heat up Graham Mertz? Can they take away the run game? Get into some third and longs, heat up Graham Mertz. That is when he is not comfortable, right? Graham Mertz has taken some stacks. He's when he, Graham Mertz is struggling, it's when he's facing pressure. So, can Kentucky win on a first and second down, get some blitz packages going, heat up Graham Mertz? Because that is probably how you throw Graham Mertz off. But the last couple games, like you really haven't seen Graham Mertz be rattled in the pocket. That's what I'll be looking for. Now, on the flip side, Kentucky offense, again, putting up some good numbers, averaging 41.3 points per game. That's number seven in the country, 7.3 yards per play. And that is number six in the country. They are putting up some numbers on the offense. And I think a lot of Kentucky fans 
would say, we're still waiting on this offense to kind of unlock. You bring in Devin Leary from NC State, more, kind of a very similar narrative to the Graham Mertz get. Well, you're getting just a, 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 a the quarterback who's played a lot of football, who's put up some nice numbers, not necessarily a Heisman Trophy winner, but a very, very good quarterback for Kentucky. You want to see this offense get unlocked because, again, as I read those stats off. I, from what I've watched at Kentucky, from I think what a lot of fans have watched from Kentucky, that offense hasn't quite unlocked yet. And if it does, like I really do think this offense can be explosive. You have three wide receivers that I think are some of the best in the country, right? Dane Key, Barry and Brown, Tavian Robinson. I would be hard pressed to find you that many wide receiver rooms who kind of have the top three wide receivers like Kentucky has. I think they have a really good running back in Davis. Now the big matchup here is the offensive line. It's what we talked about in the offseason, what we talked about all year last year for Kentucky. Couldn't pass protect. And, and so far, it's looked solid. That being said, we haven't really seen them play in elite front seven. And let me tell you about the Florida Gators. And this Florida team, especially in that front seven, has gotten so much better. And I think a lot of it has to do with Coach Austin Armstrong. I mean, he completely has changed the identity of this defense. Prince Liu is being a game wrecker. Cam Jackson, Caleb Banks, Kelby Collins is playing some really good ball. Then you like Shamar James, Scooby. Like this front, this Florida defense as a whole, but specifically this front seven is playing with a brand new identity. I mean, it is a physical group. It's going to give you a lot of different looks. It's going to fly around the football, fly around that football field, create a lot of havoc. That's not something that we're used to seeing from Florida. They've always had the talent, but that identity that we're going to take it to opposing offenses. We haven't seen that from this Florida Gators team. Austin Armstrong is giving us that, and it is paying massive, massive dividends. And so my biggest question mark for this is, can this Kentucky offensive line, who, again, has looked good through the first four weeks, can they protect Devin Leary and keep him clean? Because if Devin Leary can stay clean and he can get it out to some of these playmakers, they can get that run game going a little bit. Like, I would imagine this Kentucky offense, it is really hard to stop. That being said, I'm still not sold on this Kentucky offensive line until I see them block someone like Florida in their front seven. So that's what I'm going to be looking for on that side of the ball. Getting to the pick, Florida heading on the road, three-point dogs in Lexington, Kentucky. I'm going to lean Florida here. I And this is not me not liking Kentucky. This is me really thinking Florida is an underrated team with a ton of talent that's kind of starting to find its stride. And if Kentucky can come in and block Florida, give Devin Leary some time, put some points on the board, my my perception of this Kentucky team in the SEC is going to be a lot different from what it was heading into the season. That being said, I want to see it from an against what I think is an elite front seven for the Florida Gators. And if you see that, and this is a legit Kentucky team. That being said, we're going to wait. We're going to watch, see if that front seven for Florida can impact Devin Leary. That's probably the story of the game on this side of the ball. But I think people are just sleeping on this Gators team. It's an extremely talented team. The talent has always been there. It's starting to come together on both sides of the ball. They limit their mistakes, force some turnovers on defense, play as stingy as they have been. That is a dangerous Florida Gators team that is dramatically different from that team that we saw week one against Utah. Florida Gators covering those three points. Again, appreciate you guys rocking with the boys. The support from you guys has truly been phenomenal. If you do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel, and we'll talk to y'all later. Peace.